Welcome back to Let's Play Chloe's Requiem. Now, we are here, and we have some more things we can do before we end the game. Like we've... We've got this cut-out picture. We have a, well, we really have a whole bunch of items we never did anything with. We still have this candle stand, but we still need it. Now, I've already tried these two things out. But what I haven't done is finish the game again after doing them. So first off, that cut-out picture. It's just the picture of Chloe, right? Let's show it to Chloe. Oh, Michelle. You gotta eat your veggies. Aww. Oh. <laughs> show her the cut-out picture, yes! But father and mother were once here, but Chloe is now all alone. She is, yes. Figuratively and literally. Although we do have drawing paper. Alright, Chloe's gonna Chloe's gonna draw. Oh, it's Michelle. I have a feeling I know what this is for. There it is. No. I have a feeling I know what it's for, but I haven't tried it out yet, so I might be wrong. And the second thing we have to do... I'm going to equip both of these dolls that we picked up through the course of the game. And then... First of all... It is... is it in here? Eye in the curse... yes, and turn into cats. Pitch black haired one is eye. Pure white haired one is the curse. The curse cat cannot make a sound. The white cat, Blanc, does not meow when we talk to her. Noir does, though. In order to sever the curse, I understand that I need to kill the white cat by my own hands. A small bell. Hmm. Oops, I didn't mean to go back in there. And I'll show you what I... Why I read that. But first, we gotta go back to to Chloe's room. Alright, let's put the dolls down here. And what do we get what do they give us? A bell. We can equip the bell. And if the bell is the trump card, that door sound scared me a little bit. If the bell is the trump card, then let's No, I don't want to do that. I want to attach the bell to Noir. Good boy. Now I'm going to cut the video off here. Just because I want to skip this cutscene. 
thinking about. Oh. Just thinking about a few things that we saw during that cutscene. Like, first of all, I don't remember if I touched on this in the part nine, because it's been a while. But she said how that time when uh, Michelle saved her, she was saying how uh, uh, she really fell in love with Michelle's performance, and that it really touched her in a way that, like, s almost saved her from her father. Hence why now what's driving away Chloe's curse is... Ooh! Ooh! What? Huh? Well, you're still alive. Am I missing something? Well, for now, let's go test the other thing that I was thinking about. Did we actually get the darkened bell? Yes, we did. Cello. Uh, that was the rough sketch, right? Pianos. Whoa, what? Hello. The secret of my nah, success. Stop my what? What is going on? Stop. 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 What the fuck? Why did was that a thing? Okay. <laughs> well, fuck, this is going well. What were we doing? Numbers memo. Yeah. Okay, the housekeeper memo. Uh. Oh, pfft. It gave us the hidden room key without... I thought the protective charm would, uh... Be like a thing that we could do to... Keep that skull from hurting us. Maybe it'll be a shield against the boss. So, what Michelle said was, where did I get this? before, and obviously it's in Chloe's room. So now I... Hmm. There used to be water in there. What? The curse burn the written curse. The depicted curse. Okay, I... Uh, no, that can't be right. Hmm? I am confused. What 
What does that mean? Okay, maybe I'm off base there. I'm just all fucked up today. God damn. Now I gotta try to remember what my other thoughts were. Uh, what was the other things I wanted to talk about? Yeah, there was the story in the, uh... You're fine. Burn the written curse. Yeah, there was the one story in the library at the beginning of the game about the girl and the beautiful older sister, the ugly younger sister. Which pretty much to a T foreshadows Michelle and Pierre's, Pierre's relationship. I nearly rolled my R's there. It's French, not Spanish. And I want... Let's see, what else do I want to talk about? I was saying how Michelle's performance kind of freed Chloe from her father, figuratively, even if it was temporarily, since her father is the embodiment of Chloe's curse. It's only natural that performing Performing here drives back. Ah, you have got mad hops, bro. I wonder if the cats have something to do with uh, Michelle. Yeah, the cat seemed interesting, since Michelle apparently had a cat named Chloe as well, which who meant a lot to him. And that kinda was the twig that led to him snapping, so to speak. So that mu that Chloe cat, Noir, might be the embodiment of his curse. Creepy face. And you know how the other thing I wanted to talk about, you know how uh, Oh. Oops. I forgot to equip the knife. <laughs> I'm all fucked up today. God damn it. You know how Chloe always talked in the third person? 
in this game. Maybe not necessarily in flashbacks and stuff. It was because the Chloe we were talking to was not the real Chloe. It was like the shell of the real Chloe who was trying to guide Michelle to the real her to free her from the curse. And that's why she always talked in third person because she didn't consider herself the real Chloe. So, Chloe... Chloe this, Chloe that, the real Chloe, yeah, likes this, the real Chloe likes that, she wasn't the real Chloe. That's why she did that. So bad two is definitely the worst of the bad endings. Let's try that again. Let's actually equip the silver knife this time. Like a dingus. Hmm. Did I botch this again? <laughs> oh. Are we going to get... Well, she's not ready. Oh. Remember the charm. You're not alone. Uh-oh. Uh, she's red again. That's not good. Don't stab me, please. Are you okay? Bell! Something's dying! Bell. I think that was Bichelle's curse. Yes! It is. In case you're curious, it's OSW Review. Awesome stuff. But anyways... Chloe seems to have come to her senses. And she's happy. 
This is the real clone. And it appears everything I said... If that's the real Chloe, everything I said about the other Chloe that we were talking to the whole game is probably total bollocks, but... It sounded nice. How... How long does she have? Is she gonna make it through this? I mean, the normal end... Like, we brought the knife down on her. Finished, killed her. Like she asked us to. And then took her to see the morning sun. But this time, she's still here. I've been through one hell of a hell of a, a tough life. Hmm. It's, it's all she's experienced, really. I'm glad. Michelle looks really happy, too. Is that it? Yeah, that's... At least she got to see it before she died. Oh, oh shit. We got control. Oh, Pierre, you had your reasons, too. I don't know if we're going home, but...
Even if she snapped too. In the end, they're both free from their curse. Hmm. There's still a lot to think about here. The true end. The whole idea of the curse. Taking the form of... Someone... Something in your life that caused you the most pain. I have to go back and look at that uh, that scene with Charlotte coming back from the dead, saying that he she's Michelle's curse. But yeah, I still am of the theory that the cats had something to do with Michelle's curse again, if only because of Chloe the cat, who had such a significant impact on Michelle's life. But in the end, the cats were the key to uh, saving Chloe. And again, we you saw that idea of uh, separating her from the curse separating from you and becoming its own being. Which is kind of what we saw with Chloe, too. And I'm, I'm not entirely sure if we physically killed Chloe in the true ending. Or if it was just Blanc Noir slaughtering Blanc, the curse kitty, that did Chloe in. I'm not sure of the link there. That's why I'm thinking like it's got the curse, it's got like its manifestation. Something that hurt you the most in your life. And then eventually the curse kind of overwhelms you and then splits off from you like a darkening corpse party darkening sort of thing except the darkening darkened you splits off from the rest of you and you're left as like a shell of yourself and darkened you is evil and tries to murder you that sort of thing oh, there's still a lot to think about here But, even with the uh, sensitive story content, it's still really, that's got to be up there as one of my favorite RPG Maker horror games now, because, man, yeah, the story is just fantastic. I don't know, it's, it's right up there. It's one of the best stories I've seen in here. The atmosphere is... Like... Comparing this to, like, Amiato Bus Stop last time. Amiato and this, they both had great stories that really came together in the end. I don't know, I guess I like how the the story threads came together in Amiato just a little better, but overall I think Chloe's story is better. Uh, as far as atmosphere-wise, Chloe is miles, miles ahead in terms of being actually, honest to goodness, creepy. The, 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 classical, the classical music in this game? It, it's really... I really enjoyed it. The pairing of certain 
music to certain areas and just this this the settings they set in they that didn't make sense the scenes they set with music and sound effects and stuff visual effects it just created a really creepy atmosphere like the game over sequence where we run out of hearts and that really uh, panicky violin track kicks in and the screen's glowing red and you're just destroying everything you try to talk to and your only choice is to kill Chloe because you've gone insane that's honestly one of the, that's one of the creepiest segments that I've ever honestly encountered and just some of the stuff you do in here like taking the doll's eyes and I'll tell you one thing I absolutely love that uh, sudden surprise sound effect Ding! Really jarring and really gets to you. And that gives you the whole feeling of, oh shit, something bad is going on. And. I thought it was clever to, like, have you go through that forced. forced, uh, game over state. When you look at the that story-driven game-over state where you look at the pictures of Chloe and the father's album a disgusting monster of a father and then you have to go look at her diary read her diary to see what her, what her pa father really put her through even though we've seen glint we had seen glimpses of it up to that point and it's just you feel horrible for the poor girl Everything her fucking monster of a father put her through. And her mother, too. Who... Also a good bit messed up. My speculation is messed up by her father again. Oh, bumped the mic, sorry. Because that, that one book at the beginning says how Elaine is speculated to have acted violently toward his wife and his daughter. My thought about why uh, Chloe's mother started to snap and uh, uh, hate Chloe is because at one time Chloe's father heaped that kind of quote-unquote attention, as horrible as it is, upon her mother. And that quote-unquote attention horrible shit uh, once her mother was deprived of that attention and that attention was now focused on Chloe in her head that kind of triggered the name I saw as the reverse electro complex mother grew jealous of the attention that father was showing to the girl I assume Father was devoting all of his attention to the girl and his music. And kind of neglecting the wife in this scenario. And that drove the wife mad with jealousy, rage, and his whole hardiness, family, household is just painful, painful mess. And as we saw, it reached its peak and snapped. And now, God, it, <laughs> it hurts just thinking about what they went through. And just, oh man. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I love reading, hearing your comments from you. And how you guys love watching my blind playthroughs, just to hear my thoughts on stuff. I love reading your comments on my playthroughs, to hear your thoughts on stuff as I go through. It's to see how you guys interpret things. What you guys make of things that I'm seeing, and and things that I'm interpreting. That's a huge pleasure of mine when it comes to making these videos. So yeah, if you watch this video, 
you have a thought about something in any of my videos, leave a comment. I read them. I really do. I may not always respond, but I definitely read them. And I enjoy reading them. So keep up. Keep it up, guys. I love you. Take care. Until next time. Until then. <laughs>